Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Unless, of course, you're, you know, in one of those weird countries where it's like nighttime or something, but, you know, it's fine. I still hope it's good, of course. But anyway, how's everybody doing today? Back with more Returnal. We should have a very fun, very neat time. Pretty cool. Alright. Here we go. Well, hang on. Let me let me do a couple things here. Just, just real quickly. Just real quickly. Make sure I've got everything situated. Da, 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 da. There we go. There we go. How's everyone doing? Yes, you do, Giggles. This game is awesome. It is a must if you have a PS5. An absolute must. And by the way, Giggles, last night, a lot of fun. Lots of fun talking forced, forced gump. But yeah, you just gotta prepare yourself for the roguelike structure. You're gonna, you're gonna die a lot, and it'll reset you to beginning points, as it has me here. But there is a flow and a progression that still works really, really well. Yeah, that was that was lots of fun. I enjoyed. Okay. Uh Let's see here. But yeah, it's all changed. Like it's all different now. But there is this door here. Uh but this one leads to one of the blue doors. Which, if you're not a savvy vet of this game, the blue doors are kind of like treasure rooms. Oh my goodness. Vex has returned to my channel. How you doing, Vex? This game would probably have sold a lot better if Celine here was was Sri Lankan. That's my guess. That's probably why I didn't do probably don't know I didn't do so well. Eating breakfast for lunch before work. Well oh, nice. HBU, is that is that how about you? <laughs> I'm not cool. Oh, I'm good. Atropos, this is my tenth return. There are four meter tall corpses. This poor lady. Piled up. Yeah, Vex, I actually think this is a game you'd probably... I, I mean, I, I don't know how you'd like the gameplay, just because I don't know what types of games you like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, how about you didn't meet? I was like, I'm guessing HBU is how about you, but I don't get asked it that way very often. <laughs> but I kind of feel like, at least story-wise, I think this game would be up your alley because there's a lot of, like, mythological and, uh, a lot of mythological symbolism, a lot of, uh, I like what I've seen over Eternal. Did it have a PC release? Yes, it did. Uh, it was PS. It was PS5 and PC only. But uh, yeah, it's it has a it has a has a lot of uh, allusions to mythology and uh, heaven and hell kind of stuff. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, not from a like a not from a Christian standpoint exactly. But it's easy enough to recognize. I know there's... I brought this up yesterday. There's a short story called... Uh, called uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. And you can tell that's an influence on this. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's story is kind of told like by piecework. You're kind of finding things here and there that allude to what's really going on. And uh, 
It has, I think, for my money, one of the coolest plot twists and one of the best uses of a song in a game I've ever seen. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a neat one. This is, you know, I mean, I, I know you know that uh, I've been singing its praises for a few months now. And I, I might like it more than Elden Ring as the best game of this console generation. I really dig it. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a big challenge. It's a tough game. But uh, it's really, really cool. I think... Yeah, I, I kind of can't shut up about it, but I only feel compelled to because it sold so poorly. Like, it didn't even sell a million copies. So I'm like, hey... We gotta get some more people buying this, you know. We're not gonna bring it to a point where it's successful in all likelihood, but hey. I think we can get a few more people buying it. I'll be happy. Yeah, it, it only sold something like, uh... I think, I think I read it sold like around half a million, maybe 600, 600 grand and... Or 600k uh, and, uh... I wonder if the mechanics were a turnoff. I mean, I know a lot of people were complaining about the game's difficulty when it came out. I mean, it reviewed pretty dang well. But, uh... It's a tough game. It's a really tough game. But, uh... I, yeah, I'm guessing a lot of people were probably put off by that. Plus, you know, it's... It's not part of a franchise, and, uh... You know, those are always a tough sell. It ain't no cut. Uh, okay, so I've I've platinumed Cuphead twice. This game's harder. Exactly, baby gamers. I I think this game is quite a bit harder than Cuphead, personally. Which is not to say that Cuphead isn't challenging. Cuphead's pretty tough, but I think this is a harder game. What's going on, Canoely? And of course, Whitey, how you doing? Glad to see y'all here. It's fun. How's Vegas treating you, Noli? This also has some pretty strong uh, allusions to uh, HP Lovecraft stuff. I suck at Souls games, but I could do Cup it. Yeah, <laughs> I. I am great at both. <laughs> this one, and I, I, I don't like all difficult games, but uh, those, those three, I'll, I like. I kind of like. Well, those two and this one, so that makes three. I like all of those. Why is my phone doing this? That was weird. Okay. Game looks fun. I'm listening to you while I'm making stills for Lance's Shogun later. Paid off my pre-order for Stellar, Br Stellar Blade. Yes, sir. I almost said Stellar Blade like a true Asian. I almost said Stellar Blade. You're going to buy Stellar Blade? But yeah, I, uh, I need to finish the demo. I played about an hour of it. It's, it's not bad. I like it. It's got some, uh, it's got some cool, got some cool mechanics. I dig it. All right. Have a good one, Vex. Thanks for stopping by. Later, later. Stella Bubes. I just, I hope there are, I hope, I mean, I hope that the game is good for one thing. That's, that's the primary concern. I don't like the idea of Stellar Blade being a mediocre game and people saying, oh, it's great because boobs. And I'm like, that's that annoys the crap out of me. It's like, that's not a good reason to praise a game. That's a stupid reason to praise a game. But from what I've played of it thus far, it's, uh, 
it's got some promise. You should stream the demo. It's only an hour. Yeah, I I could potentially do that. Yeah, because I have it now. It's violent. I know that. It's a nice violent game. Okay, let's go into this little challenge room. Now. I want to see, see. I want to. I want to see if you die at the same parts I did. I want to see if people. I want to see how often other people die in this game in general, because this game is. This game's really tough. But awesome. All right, got that. Get some health. Uh oh, it's one of those guys. I apologize if I'm not super talkative during this part. These combat sections can be pretty tough. Alright, got that one. I love the flow of combat in this too. So I'm baffled that people didn't get into this, or give it at least a chance, because I know it's hard, but holy crap, it's fun. Oh, I got hit. Getting hit's not good in this. Uh, so I have a killing mode attaches afterwards, two malfunctions, and nah, I, I don't want that. Oh, that was good. That was bad. It's hard but fun. Exactly. That's and that 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 belongs on a T-shirt. It does. Oh crap! Oh man! I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this. <laughs> they got me. Now, those challenge rooms are pretty tough, but it's fine. Dying is a part of life. <laughs> Am I still playing Robocop? Yes! And I'm really liking it, too! I am quite pleased with Robocop. I don't know how... I want to say I'm probably close to the end, but I'm not totally sure. I didn't get a chance to play it yesterday. But yeah, I like Robocop. It's ruins. really good. It is vast. Impossibly tall. There may be answers there. Okay, so she's bringing up the uh, Tower of Sisyphus, which is, uh, I, that's the DLC, but I can't get to it yet. Because I need the uh, thing. Robocop average game with a perfect story feels like Robocop 3. I honestly think mechanically it's better than average. I know graphic. I know the graphics are kind of PS3 level, maybe a, a notch higher. Not not a big notch higher. There's actually PS3 games that probably look a little bit better. But I actually think gameplay-wise, it's pretty dang solid. I have a good time while I play it. I think they uh, I think they did a good job with it. I mean, it's not perfect. There's there's better. There's way better FPS games, but they, uh, they do enough different to where, like, because, okay, let me interrupt myself here. Uh, FPS games are always a challenge because so many of them feel similar. You have to do a lot to make it different. You know, make it feel fresh. I think they do that pretty well in that game. Yeah, I mean, it's a low-budget game, but I, I mostly think that graphics are kind of the thing that shows how low-budget it is. I don't know if mechanics are what make it feel low-budget. I think the mechanics are pretty solid. If I think if... Uh, put it this way. If it had PS5-level graphics, we would just simply call it a AAA game. 
I don't think we would recognize the mechanics as anything other than it's like, yeah, these are really good mechanics. These are good. They rule. Because you, what they needed to achieve to me was make it feel like I am playing as RoboCop, and I feel like I'm playing as RoboCop, which is pretty neat. Boss fights are challenging. Yeah, I, and I, I love them. I think the boss fights are actually really, really fun. But yeah, graphics-wise, sure. It's definitely uh, it's definitely low budget on the graphical side of things. But it's a really fun game. Helldivers is perfect for $40. You fight two enemy types. Uh, but yeah, I, I I still haven't had a chance to play Helldivers. I mean, I'd have to buy it, but you need money for that. <laughs> yeah, Robocop looks awesome. Graphics are definitely low budget. That I can, I mean, they're very like they're not even previous gen. They're not even PS4, Xbox One level. They are. PS3, like high-end PS3. That's what those are. Helldivers is so much fun. Yeah, I, I want to play it because I've been watching other people play it and I'm like, yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. Robocop is on my wishes. Yeah, I got... Uh, Robocop went on sale for about 30 I think, and I was like, alright, I'll buy it for 30 It looks cool enough... And I've heard enough good things for, yeah, I'll, I'll spend 30 bucks on it. And I think it's definitely worth it. I play one match a day, Helldivers, I burn out on after a while because it's repetitive. I love it in bursts, I also have 60 hours. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, jeez. Alright, gotta take that tower out. Gosh, I hate running into that tower when I have... Gosh, why do I have to have this stupid pistol for this? Crap. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> what is that thing? Oh, it's oh, okay, it's those guys. They're just they're doing their targeting thing, but. Oof. I was ill-equipped for that room, that's for sure. But that's kind of what's interesting about this game, is it randomizes when you go back. But yeah, this game starts off really challenging. It gets a little bit easier as you go along and you get yourself a little bit more upgrading and whatnot, but a lot of the times you are at the mercy of the randomizer, which I'm fine with. Keeps you on your toes. I like it. I've got five ether. Uh, yeah, let's use it. What can I get? At low integrity, gain 25% protection. That could be helpful. I based it on replayability and length. That's why Call of Duty is a waste of 60 for me. RE3 was a joke. I Yeah, it was. It's a $20 at best. FF7 Rebirth and the GTA games are full price. Replayability is usually a pretty big factor. I mean, especially if you're going to... No game is worth full price if you can't get replayability out of it. I think that's just... That's a baseline qualification. If it's worth one playthrough, it's not worth full price. That's... Even if the game is long, I don't like that. I mean, I mean, sure, I mean, unless maybe it's like 80 to 100 plus hours, maybe you could make a justification for that. But, uh... Grant, I mean, granted, that's it's hard to know that uh, until you've actually beat it. I have dumped 300 hours into Red Dead 2. Yeah, I mean, Red Dead... Well, and Red Dead 2 is great to replay, by the way. Um, just saying. Um, 
But yeah, if you can put 200 hours into a game, yeah, that's worth full price no matter how many times you play it. Oh, well, you need to play it once, at least. <laughs> that is, I'm already assuming you have if you say I've dumped that many hours, of course. But, uh... Red Dead's a game I would play multiple times, because Red Dead 1 and 2 are... I've already played Red Dead 1, like... Five times, I think? Maybe something like that? But it's one of my top five favorite games ever, so that's why. And Red Dead 2? Also freaking amazing! Crap. It's not good getting hit in this game. You want to try to avoid getting hit. But yeah, replayability is a huge factor for me. Uh, now, length... It, it depends, because like to me it's like, okay, let's say you got a game that's like 12 hours long, right? Now, that's obviously not a long game. But, if it's 12 hours and it's really great, and it's one I'd replay over and over again, well then that's fine. I don't mind that. I don't, I mean, I'm not going to pay $70 for that. I don't know if there's any game I want to pay $70 for it, but if it's a short game that I can replay over and over, I feel a little better about, about things. Tez, how you doing? What's up? Well, it's not really a question of what's, what we're calling good CLS. It's a question of how much are you willing to pay for it? Uh... I haven't paid $70 for any game yet, and I would prefer not to. I, I hate I hate that they're constantly raising prices because I don't buy that they have to. I understand gaming budgets are enormous, but I think the more that we give in to that, the more expensive they're going to be. Like when I'm hearing like G like they're gonna charge I mean, so the rumors are still out there, they're gonna charge something like $150 for GTA 6. Now, some people said, well, no, it's going to be $150 if you want the single player and online game. And I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm like, that's stupid. I won't do that. I don't want to pay. I, I don't love GTA enough to pay $70 for the base game anyway. Uh, but like to me, $60, I was like, you know, we had I didn't mind the price raise to 60 when it happened because games were $50 forever. I mean, we literally had $50 games from, like, Nintendo to the PS2, Xbox era. That was a long time. Uh, so when it raised to $60, I was like, okay, it was a matter of time. But we, we had a long period of time between $50 and $60. It went to $70 fast. Or at least it felt freaking fast. Ow. Plus, I've got such a backlog of games now. Oh crap, I'm stuck in a room with this thing. I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna win this one. I hate dealing with those things. Ugh. Yeah, those purple orbs are horrible to get stuck in a room with, especially if you're low on health. Yeah, we'll have the. PlayStation 5 Pro for GTA 6, which I'm just like, piss off. I'm not buying the... You don't have... There's not, a, not enough games on PS5 to justify a Pro. That's stupid. That's absolutely retarded. But yeah, we went to $60... We went from $60 to $70 games way too fast. So I'm just, I have such a backlog now that I'm like, I can, I can afford to wait. I'm patient of to where it's like, I'll wait for it to go on sale. Last game I bought at full price was uh, Armored Core 6 because they charged $60 for it. And From Software's track record is pretty excellent. Yeah, Xbox already said they're working on their next system. Might be a handheld hybrid. Yeah, now everyone's going to try to copy the Switch. Lights were left on. It's open. 
Oh, we're going back in. Yeah, I'm the same way, Tez. I wait till it goes on sale, pretty much. Pretty much everything, I wait for it to be on sale. Tears of the Kingdom, should have waited. Yeah, I paid 50 for Tears of the Kingdom. This has changed. It's like someone is moving things. She's got pills. I these for a while. Yeah, well, their games are sometimes on sale, like, but never, you're never getting a big discount. But yeah, their games stay high priced freaking forever. But I kind of, I kind of get where Nintendo's coming from because they don't release a ton of games year over year. And they don't have a lot of third party games to rely on. I mean, they, I mean, they get some, but it usually takes way too long and, they're, and you're basically getting a lesser version of the third party game most of the time. So I sort of get why they do what they do. And a lot of their games are really good, so you don't feel crappy for having bought them. You don't feel ripped off most of the time. Can't say never. Can't say it'll hold up forever, but we'll see. Hopefully they keep putting out quality content. I tell we'll get more third-party games with the Switch 2. I mean, it depends on when Switch 2 releases, I guess, but... They'll get some of the ones that we already have. I love just looking at the little details that they've got. We got a little glue. We're going to spin it. I always wanted to leave. <sighs> Does that really suck, though, Cannoli? Isn't it kind of great that we have such big backlogs of games where we're like, oh, I could, I could stop buying games all year and absolutely... Like, I could stop buying games probably for three years and definitely not be bored. Even if it's like, if I'm just going to play new games for like the next two, three years, I, I'm almost certainly not going to be bored. A little bit of, uh, a little bit of mythology, a little bit of stuff she's reading. Get your little music box here. Tomorrow I'll start Aliens Dark Descent. Figure I'll beat it in like two or three days. I only paid for Celebrate because I had a GameStop credit. Yeah, I mean, having GameStop credit makes, uh, like if somebody tells me I paid $70, but then they're like, well, 20, 30 of it was store was like GameStop credit. I'm like, eh. You don't have to say you paid full price then. It, unless you specifically were trading in games just for that, games like you actually like, you were just that desperate, then I might look down on that, but if they were just games you were done with and were like, oh, that's fine. Now, Battlefront 2 is fun. Yeah, that's true, Cannoli. Game Pass can be worth it. Game Pass, I think, is kind of... Uh, killing PS Plus right now. Match. It's not even really that close. Well, I paid Elden Ring full too, but it was $60. I didn't mind paying $60 for Elden Ring. Dead Kronos white streaming. Delay in our response. Adequate match. Astro emergency procedures. Evacuation confirmed. Let me in. That's creepy. Right there at the bottom corner saying, let me in. And now the room gets all dark and spooky. PlayStation Premium is an expensive period, and it's ridiculous. Like, I have Plus. I have the basic version of Plus. I'm not paying for that premium crap. I don't think it's worth it. I honestly do not think PlayStation's premium service is worth it at all. Especially with that, sh like, you have to stream the PS3 games and they look like crap. Screw that. Yeah, I agree. They need to evolve. Like, the fact that... Like, I have games in my PS3 digital library. The fact that those are available on premium, but I can't just have them, is a load of bullcrap. I should be... They should just say, okay, look. You've already bought them, so here you go. You can play them regardless, because you paid money for them. I'm like, y'all can piss off. There's that freaking astronaut again. 
Yeah, you have to pay a lot for it to pay for itself, yeah. I, I, well, I've had the full version of it for a little while. I had it for like a month or two to see if I thought the selection was worth it or, uh, you know, the quality of the PS3 games made it worth it, but I, I just, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know a lot of people are big Asura's Wrath fans. But I, I mean, that's probably a compatibility issue, which, you know, if you're going to fix the compatibility of a game like that, then uh, it has to be worth it financially, and the way they see it, they're probably like, it's not. I don't personally know whether it would or would not be worth it, but that's... I can understand if they don't think it's a, you know, wise decision, money-wise. I don't know how well or poorly it's sold. And she's got this little stuffed squiddy thing. I remember you. Oh my goodness. It started being all creepy. And you've got this little spooky square. What's a 20 hour? Uh, he's talking about the game of Sarah's Wrath. I've never seen this before. Regrettable delay, inadequate match. Who's this for? We apologize for the regrettable delay in our response with a truly humbling account of applicants to choose from. Our unexpected predicament is both extraordinary and unprecedented. After a thorough analysis of your materials, although we appreciate your interest, we have decided to pursue other candidates whose backgrounds and aptitudes more closely align with our current requirements and future needs. At present, we feel your proficiencies would prove an inadequate match given conditioning necessary for deep space missions. Should we have openings more related to your field, we encourage you to reapply at such a time. We appreciate your interest. Warmest regards, Astra Command. Yeah, she, she's like... That'd be kind of alarming, is it's like, wait a minute, I'm literally in space, but I'm getting this letter saying that I didn't qualify? What the heck? <laughs> What the heck is going on? It's trippy. One thing eventually I want to do with Gord or Cannoli or Vex is the game The Quarry. Oh, I've heard of that. Must be some way uh, we can stream that with all of us. I love that. I love the let everyone vote on the story idea. I mean, I would guess that we'd probably just all have to have the same... Uh, I'm guessing we would all just have to have the same console or whatever. It's Is that just a PS5 game or PS4 game or whatever? I, I don't know. I don't remember if I, I know it's on I know it's on this this console. I haven't played it. Oh, I mean I know more or less what it is, but I'm not sure if you can cross platform it or not personally. I don't know. Something to look up. That's, that's pretty much all you gotta do is like, can you cross platform it? And if so, on which? Ow. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them.
Nailed it. I want to get a different gun. If it didn't happen, we'll leave it running. All right, no problem, dude. I, I'll tell you what, I, I just, I like the idea of playing more of those Jackbox games with, uh, with people. Those are not just the ones that uh, Enzo plays, like, it's some of the ones I've seen where you have to, like, draw, uh, draw stuff. It's like, there's that drawing, like, telephone type game they have, which is just absolutely hysterical. Like, I've watched the EFAP guys play it, and it's, it kills me. I would love to stream that with uh, various people. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But yeah, I like the idea of hanging with the peeps and streaming various things. That all sounds pretty neat. But yeah, I've, I saw some things about the quarry and I was like, yeah, that's probably pretty cool. Okay, not gonna worry about that thing. Uh, obviously can't get up there yet. Uh, let's go over to the other little blue room over here. Wait a minute, what's that? Oh, that's just tentacles. Oh, hello. Free <laughs> Wi-Fi in the moon, bless it. Are everywhere. They strengthen me, also weaken me. And knowing that, I find my progenitor egg attach attaching my or body. detaching parasite repairs integrity. There you go. Y'all just started talking about watermelon and lettuce, I'm just like, the heck's going on? I, I must have missed the beginning of this conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm pro watermelon. Oh no. No. Not with this gun. Not this again. That's right, purple ones, I don't think you can just go through like that. Gosh, dang it. Oh, got it. Wow. And a gun. I don't like bloody facing those. Alright, see you, CLS. Have a good one. Challenging room right over there. Wait a minute. Hang on. There's a chest. You gotta get ready and head out and watch the meth addicts in downtown Vegas. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, Cannoli. Uh, where's our? Where's the chest? Oh, it requires a key, which I don't have. That's fine. Let's go in here. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Where 
protection. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, this is not a challenging room. This is an exit room. This is where you go uh, later in the game. Well, this is basically kind of the shortcut to the third area once you are able to go to the third area. Although to do that, you gotta beat the second area. Let's go there. got tracker swarm on it. Which, yeah, that's a... That should be alright. Up our proficiency. Uh, there's the switch. Can't do anything in there. Uh, can't go in there. Let's see. I think that's the that's the way out. That's the way to the second area. So let's go ahead and head there. And in we go. And the other good thing is when you go to these, when you progress to these areas, uh, you'll immediately get that uh, that orb up to my weapon proficiency level to like five. So pretty much the first weapon pickups will all be much, much better. adaptation isn't unique to the forest. The desert has similarly been altered. Could the whole world be rearranging itself? Yes. Alright, what's in here? Uh, moderate malignancy. Let's open it, what the heck. Ooh, what's that? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm actually going to go ahead and use the shield thing, too. Maybe the upgrades will be a little bit more worthwhile. Uh, let's head over here. Got him. The other one... Uh oh I didn't open that thing when I first came in here. All 
Alright. Got them healed. Alright. What's this one going to be? Am I going to have to fight it? I bet I have to fight it. I have to fight it! <laughs> Let's grab that key real quick. getting hit. <laughs> I think I got hit. I was too close to it that time. Got him there. Or her. Okie dokie. That's taken care of. buy stuff. Yay. Oh, this one you don't even have to buy anything. What'd that get? Uh, fabricator pod. Fabrication materials completed. over here. What's that thing? There we go. Uh-oh. That's something. I really need to get a better weapon. an upgrade on that front. I am still walking around with a level one. I mean, it's fine. Uh, oh, crap. This is melee damage. Nah, I like my melee damage. Dang it. Killed that. Uh, I'll try it. Yeah, that one hurt me, but it's a bit of resin, so. One decent health pack should heal me fine, plus I was already needing to refill it anyway, so whatever. I'm guessing I'm not ready to go in here yet. Nope, can't go in there yet. Got a big one over there. Getting to rear its ugly noggin.
Okay. Let's be careful with this thing. I wonder how quickly that recharges. Right. Ooh, got stuck there for a sec. That's not good. Oh boy. It's a handgun, but it's much higher in level, so... And I got him. So that'll do. And... Spit them all right there. I will take it. I'm trying to see if there's a way up here. There's stuff around me. What's this? Uh, more spoiled resin. Mm. I'm going to avoid it for now. Because I have full health. I don't want to mess with that. more turret up there. Preparing to do a live stream tomorrow for Civil War. This this film is going to piss people off. So have you seen it? Or are you just uh, going by the discourse? I know the movie's got some, is, is from what I'm hearing from like Alex Garland and all that. I think the movie's supposed to be kind of pro-journalist or whatever, which is, you know, it's funny to me, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. I generally like Alex Garland's movies, so I'm willing to give it a watch. There we go. Plus seven, Takio. What's up, Jacob? Me and Toxic are going to do a live reaction discussing after we see it. It comes out tomorrow afternoon. Cool. Neat. I'm excited that uh, I saw today that uh, Dune 2's uh, coming out in 4K on uh, at like the middle of May. So that'll be out pretty soon. In fact, on the uh on certain websites you can already watch you can already uh, stream an hd version of it that's kind of neat <laughs> though i'm buying it i want a physical version because i really like dune i thought dune was neat I thought Dune 2 was pretty awesome. Granted, I have not seen a ton of movies for this year, but of the of the films I've seen in 2024, it's it's my favorite so far. With a uh, Late Night with the Devil coming in second. I look at Dune 2 like, hang on, I'll get to you in a sec because <laughs> I gotta be careful here. That's just, oh gosh, that thing. I'm only just not realizing how much freaking damage that thing does. Man, does anyone know the name or person Lang Lang? Uh, doesn't sound familiar. Crap, I died. No crap. I look at Dune 2 like how people are comparing Shogun. I don't know the book, so I can't compare. Well, it's a hard issue with Book Pierce. I don't bother. I don't care about. I mean, like, I I don't mind listening to Book Pierce their perspective I mean, I find their perspective interesting but I 
I honestly don't know how much I like talking movies with Book Purists because at the end of the day, I generally don't care how well a movie adheres to the book if the movie is good or even bad. There are movies that adhere to the book that still suck. Books are not... It's like, I mean, people are like, oh, but it, it does so much with the comic lore. I'm like, I don't care. If the comic sucks, then so's the movie if it's following it. What's going on, Israel? Uh, Lang Lang got a star on the Walk of Fame. Oh, I, I don't know. I wonder if there are book purists for the Godfather films. Uh, I'm sure there probably are some, but... I don't know. By the way, Israel, you just came in here. I was telling them, uh... Dune 2 is coming out in 4K, uh, I think May 14th. So, there you go. <laughs> when I listen to Nerd Roddick as he praises Lord of the Rings as his favorite trilogy of all time, he even said this, uh, some book purists dislike the trilogy. Yeah, there are. There are book purists who don't care for the trilogy. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I agree as well. It's quick, but... You gotta think though, it's that gives that gives theaters what, another five weeks? That's I think that's enough time to kinda know uh gives your movie enough time to make the money it's it's likely gonna make. I don't think it's gonna have uh like Oppenheimer legs necessarily. Which granted that it that kinda shocks me, but you know, whatever. It's fine. It's made a good amount of money anyway, so that's cool by me. It's made, what, six, seven hundred million already? Or close to seven hundred million? Okay, he's a musician. Neat. I don't know anything about him. Not off the top of my head, at least. Not somebody I'm familiar with. I'm sure everyone was shocked by Oppenheimer's box office dominance. I mean, I, I, I can honestly say I didn't talk to any... I didn't talk to anyone who thought it was going to make almost a billion dollars that's a, a YouTuber, but... To Jalen's credit, he said he thought it would. Granted, I think Jalen was just kind of shooting in the dark, but that's fine. It's, it's, hey, you know, if you end up right, you end up right. Although he's not right yet. It has to actually make a billion for him to be right, but... Still, he was he's the closest <laughs> but yeah I R-rated three hour biopic can't say I expected it to make the money it made but I'm glad it did because it's a dang good movie Okay, I want to read what Blue Collar said because I find that in... Okay. Uh, a wise man said, TV, movies are a different medium. Not everything can be translated to film. Also, why we use the term adaptation. <laughs> well, they're not making you a liar, Jalen. It was a prediction. Not, not You didn't state it as a concrete fact. You made a prediction. So... Don't worry, you're not a liar. I do think eventually it's going to hit a billion dollars. Um, it's going to be one of those things where... Um, maybe they'll... like If it doesn't hit it before, then they'll do like a 5-10 year anniversary release for it, and it'll hit it. Something along those lines. But yeah, as far as like not everything... It, it depends on... Like, do I think every... Obviously, not everything can be adapted faithfully. But, uh... I mean, I'm sorry. It's like, for the people who griped and complained about the things that got left out of the Lord of the Rings movies, I'm like, guys, not... Or in the Lord of the Rings books, I'm like... Not everything in the Lord of the Rings books was adaptable. It's like, that's just the way it is. And... I don't care how much this pisses off some book purists, but there are things the Lord of the Rings movies do better than the Lord of the Rings books. It's like, I, I love Tolkien's books. They're freaking awesome. But there's parts of the movies that are better. And there's parts of the books that are slow and dull 
and I get that they're world build some of it's world building, and I'm uh, that's fine, but some of it isn't. Council of Elrond part of the book, it's really freaking boring. It is really freaking boring, and not in a good way. It's genuinely boring. <laughs> And there's a lot of things he did in the book that I'm like, that sucks. So, there you go. Trim the Feather Books. I mean, Stephen King makes thousand page books. Also, some things need to be edited out. Yeah, kids. Yeah, the kids there. My opinion of the two Dune movies, the first movie was great, and parts of the second movie. It gave the rings a power treatment. I'm not going to go quite so far as say they gave Dune 2 any rings of power treatment. I can't I can't go that far down on it. But I mean, I haven't read the books, but uh, I don't care. I think it's a good movie. Uh, I complained about the new Hunger Games movie. I thought they left stuff out there that really important for the character progression of plot. Yeah, I mean, I can understand a book purist not liking them leaving out important parts that would have actually enhanced the product. That, I, I can get behind that notion. That's fine. But the idea that you have to adapt every little aspect or that things are not allowed to be done differently, if I'm like, well, if they're done differently and they're good, I don't care. My brother-in-law has read all three Lord of the Rings books and he's like, he thinks... Uh, he thinks they're slow. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm not even saying the Lord of the Rings books on the whole are slow. I think they're great books. I love reading them. But this idea that they are these untouchable literary masterpieces, I'm like, well, they're masterpieces, yeah, but they're not untouchable. It's like, I, I love what Tolkien did, but, you know, we talk a lot uh, about... You know, like, filmmakers who tend to be self-indulgent. And, like, Tolkien had a bit of self-indulgence to his work, too. You know, now granted, it worked because, you know, his world-building is probably the best of any author, any fantasy author that's ever lived. But as far as them being works of entertainment, uh, there's parts of it that don't quite work on that front. Because they meander a bit or nothing happens, and you're like, uh, that's not always the best way to write. <laughs> Generally, when something's... when you put your characters in a situation, you want it to enhance your plot in some respect. The relationship between Paul and Shiny was... Yeah, I mean, look... I don't necessarily mind the relationship. It's more I didn't think Zendaya was a good choice for it. And... My issue with their relationship was that um, my issue with it was that they turned her into the audience character to where like she was basically there to make it obvious that what Paul was doing was bad and I'm like well you didn't need that I'm not an idiot I don't like hand holding I, I don't like hand holding to that extent and changing a character and their relationship with another one just for the sake of hand-holding, I don't care for that. But most of the relationships, the relationship stuff before that happens, I'm fine with. I still think Zendaya wasn't a great choice to play uh, Shani, but whatever. I mean, I don't think she's terrible either. I just think she's mediocre. Uh, have I read George R. R. Martin's books? Yes. The, I mean, if you're, I mean, obviously, if you're referring to the Game of Thrones books, yes, I've read all of those. And I'm going to be honest, after book three, they're kind of boring. I personally, like, I, I'm not sure between Dune 1 and Dune 2 which I like more. I just know that my first watch of Dune 2, I enjoyed it more. Will that hold up? Don't know. Have to watch it again. But I, I liked Dune two more on first watch. My first watch of Dune 2, I would actually go like like a 9, but that's just a first watch score. That's not like a, an actual movie score. I wouldn't apply that yet. But yeah, I quite liked Dune 2 when I first watched it. 
Have I seen 2000 Dune series? No. I've seen the 1984 Dune, and it's terrible. Like, f really freaking terrible. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought... What I liked about Dune 2 is that it's... And part of the reason why I think it worked better as a theatrical experience was it was more entertaining. But I thought what they were doing with Paul was pretty freaking awesome. Now, I, again, I don't know how well it'll hold up on rewatch compared to the first one. I have little doubt that I'm still going to like it, but uh, we'll see. We shall see. I know I'm looking forward to buying it. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard the Dune series was really good. I've not seen it. I didn't know much about Dune back then. I mean, truth be told, I don't know a ton about it now. But, uh, I knew far less about it then. Yeah, other than the, uh, the Villeneuve movies, the only Dune I am, I've seen is the 1984 movie. And again, I think it's kind of freaking garbage. I loved Yesterday Drinker reviewing Godzilla Kong. Uh, it knows what it is. He's like, yeah, it's okay. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Dune 2 yet, or Dune, uh, Godzilla Kong yet. So I can't say where I stand on the movie as a whole. Uh, I did watch Kung Fu Panda 4 today, and it was absolutely pointless. I, I thought it, I mean, it's, I, I think I'd, I'd rate it like a 4 out of 10, maybe. I think it's a pointless movie. You know, it's not the worst cash grab I've ever seen, but it's a cash grab. And Aquafina is freaking annoying. Her voice is so annoying. But yeah, it was really boring. I, I didn't laugh a single time. Uh, like, not even close. <laughs> like, I didn't even come close to laughing during it. I was like, yeah, that was... Just felt like a way, and for a movie that was only 90 minutes, it felt really slow. That felt slow. I was like, how am I this bored during a 90 minute film? Why does it feel like it's two plus hours? Let's see. Uh, it was good, although they went cheap on the costume department. Okay. I assume you're referring to the Dune series. Yeah, I've heard good things. There's a lot of old sci-fi shows and whatnot that I need to familiarize myself with. Was Kung Fu Panda 3 good? No. Kung Fu Panda 3 was pointless. Kung Fu Panda 3 they made just so he could have his he could find Panda Dad. And by the way, and even even though you know, because Poe basically he has his adopted father and now he has his actual panda father. And they emphasize over and over and over again in Pan Kung Fu Panda 4 that he's got two dads. Now obviously it's not a gay thing because they're not in a relationship. But they push it a lot, and it feels like they're really trying to be pointed about that. And I'm like, okay, we get it. He has two dads. And you're all not doing it in a joking fashion, so it's like, it's kind of cringe. Uh, Brian Cranston is legit funny. They get it. I didn't think he was funny in either of the movies, personally, and I like him. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Brian Cranston. He's an awesome actor, but he's wasted in those movies. Kung Fu Panda 2 I thought was okay, but I mean, even that movie I was like, it's kind of unnecessary. I enjoyed it. It was a pretty decent animated movie, but I can't, I don't think I've ever gone back to it. Oh, he's great in, he's great in Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, the first Kung Fu Panda, 
that, that's kind of all they needed. They really didn't need to do any more. They really didn't need any more Kung Fu Panda movies after the first one. The first one was enough. But you gotta milk that cow to death. You gotta milk it to death. We can never let sleeping dogs lie. Honestly, the only part of Kung Fu Panda 4 that was mildly entertaining was Tenacious D doing Hit Me Baby one more time. Oh, dude, you haven't seen The Last Wish yet? Oh my gosh. I'd say after Rango, that might be the best animated movie of uh, the last, like, decade or plus. Decade, well, I don't know. what Rango's been out. How long has Rango been out? That's been out more than a decade, actually. 20 years. We'll say that. Puss and Boost The Last Wish is spectacular. It's amazing. I love how the animation was fluent in part one. Tai Long, a panda. He's a panda. Where are you going to... I <laughs> can't go big time sit on me. Oh, yeah. Over into the Spider-Verse? I... Yeah, kinda, yeah. Uh, it's... It's not as, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? It's not as innovative. The frame rate drove you nuts? Dude. Last Wish is spectacular storytelling. Get over the frame rate thing and watch it. That is some of the best animated storytelling I have seen in years. It's so good. It is so good. Like, that is... It's one of the best animated... Like, one of the best examples of animated storytelling I have seen in a really long time. It's so freaking good. But, uh... Because they had to do it on a budget, that's why obviously they had to change up the style. But, no, the trailer for Puss and Boost the Last Wish didn't sell me at all. Like, I didn't even know the movie was a thing until, like, a month before it released. But then everyone started talking about how good it was. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. And when I did, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Now, I would say Into the Spider-Verse is more innovative as far as its animation goes. But I kind of feel like Across the Spider-Verse hurt it a bit. Because Into the Spider-Verse is a great movie by itself, but now that it's connected to Across the Spider-Verse, it kind of hurts it. So I don't think Across the Spider-Verse is very good. I didn't like Across the Spider-Verse that much. I thought it was very mediocre and, in many ways, pretty annoying. A lot about Across the Spider-Verse bugged me. So, yeah. I feel like it has retroactively harmed its predecessor. Now, not so much to where it's not so great. I still really like Into the Spider-Verse, but I did not like Across the Spider-Verse all that much. We got Puss and Boots the, La Puss and Boots the Last Wish. Pretty excellent. I like you. They forced a lot of that into it, yeah. It's a whole freaking scene devoted to it. And I think the plot's just overall really freaking messy. Let's see, I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, no, I think I'm alright. Alright, let's go. Uh, oh. I have to platform a bit. Oh, uh, what's over here? Oh, that's that room. Wish or Trolls 3 are the worst anime movies that have been made for a long time. Uh, I didn't bother with either. I've heard Wish is very... is pretty bad. Yeah, I had to slip the Protect Transkin to the back. Well, it's not even just that. That's not even all they do. That's just one thing they added to it. Like, if that was all there was, I probably wouldn't have been bugged as much. 
but they put a ton of that stuff in it. Like, when he's first, like... When he gets to, like, the place where there's all the different spider people... I mean, you've got pregnant Spider-Man, you got, you know... Pretty... I mean, you got a ton of different Spider-Man... And you can tell there's a lot of activism stuff going on with there, a lot of, uh... A lot of box checking in that scene, and it's really overt. But yeah, I'd, I just didn't like it that much. Yellow hair is honestly pretty cool, though. Uh, is that the one Oscar Isaac uh, voices? I've seen the movie once, and I didn't like it that much. I'm not going to remember their names. I assume that's who Oscar Isaac was voicing. Okay. Yeah, I just didn't really care for it. And I thought the movie was way over long, too. I didn't think it was a good enough movie to be two and a, two and a half freaking hours. It's like, jeez. End already. Fabrication costs reduced by 15. Increase the chance of finding malignant items. I don't like malignant items. 50% chance to find better salvage from hostiles. Uh, well, let's try to avoid any... Well, functions then. That one can actually be a no-cost parasite. Kill him! Kill, kill. Oh, dude, if they- I would love for them to remake Resident Evil 5. I will stream that in a heartbeat. Either to complain about them nerfing the fact that it's in Africa, which is stupid that they would even think they've got to remake it on those- or they've got to leave out the fact that it's in Africa, and I'm like, that's stupid. We can't remake 5. It takes place in a country with black people. It's like, there can be black zombies. It's okay. It's okay, guys. It's like we've had how many games of killing white zombies? I think one game of killing black zombies. I think you can be fine. We're not gonna... It's not racist. I mean, if anything, if we're gonna do... If we're gonna be properly representative, you know, one game out of eight with black zombies, I mean, that's what, 12.5%? That reaches, that reaches the demographic quota correctly, so yeah. At this point, I think you're racist if you don't. <laughs> Hot take the Lion King is overrated as heck. Uh, I can't get on board with calling the Lion King overrated. I mean, it's not my favorite, but Lion King's pretty great. Lion King's a pretty great movie. I like it. The remake's absolute trash, but animated Lion King's pretty dang good. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but it's it's awesome. I like it. Yay, we did it just in time. It's literally the best animated Disney movie ever made. I mean, I it's I don't think it is, but I don't I can't speak against the take because it's not an uncommon sentiment. And I get where people are coming from. It's pretty great. It's a great movie. I don't know if I'd go I, I probably personally wouldn't give it a ten out of ten, but I'd probably go like a nine. I'd probably give it at least a 9. It's pretty great. What is your number one Disney animated movie? Oh, well, favorite or best? Which one are you asking for? Because the one that's my favorite is, is objectively probably not the best one. But uh, my favorite one is Mulan. I love Mulan. I think Mulan has the best soundtrack. Like, it's the only one that actually has multiple songs that I genuinely love. 
most of the well not the only one but most of disney movies i i maybe like one song occasionally two and not much more than that i love just about every song in mulan and i think the story's awesome but yeah mulan's my favorite one it's incredibly charming as for which one's the best hmm Gosh. Lion King would be in the running. Uh, and I assume we're leaving out Pixar movies, because Pixar is its own thing. Uh, Beauty and the Beast would be in the running. I think Beauty and the Beast is pretty amazing. Um, what else? I think Sleeping Beauty is highly underrated, but probably not the best. But I do think Sleeping Beauty is pretty great. Uh-oh. Uh I'm about to get shot. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm thinking... I think Tarzan's pretty great, to be honest. Emperor's New Groove is great. It's definitely not the greatest, but Emperor's New Groove is awesome. Emperor's New Groove is hilarious. I swear, one of my favorite parts of that movie is where... It's like, how did you all get here before me? It's like, I'll tell you how, uh... Kronk? How did, how did we get here? I don't know. He's like, well, you got me. By all accounts, it uh, doesn't make sense. I love that. I'll, it's, it's so... It's so freaking funny. It's the most farcical... It's a lot of fun. Yeah, Emperor's New Groove is easily one of the most rewatchable. Tarzan, uh, obviously, they don't do a lot of singing. It's more of a soundtrack, and it's a dang good soundtrack. Uh, Tarzan's awesome. I like Tarzan a lot. I'm covering Tarzan. Uh, but my number one... Well, Israel, you just named it. I think my number one greatest is probably Aladdin. I think Aladdin's probably their greatest. I think Aladdin top to bottom is the greatest Disney movie. Lilo and Sit Okay, Blue Collar, don't get mad. I've never watched it. I've never watched Lilo and Stitch. Not even once. I haven't watched even a minute of that movie. I've seen literally none of it. I... It's one of those movies that I had, like... Like, none of my friends watched it. I thought it looked strange. So there was like, there was no, there was no incentive for me. There was no reason for me to watch it. I had a lot of uncertainty, and none of my friends talked about it. So I was like, okay, whatever. And it just passed me by. It's only been within the last like five, ten years that I've heard people talk about it fondly. So I'm like, well, shoot, maybe I need to finally watch it. But it also came out during a time where I was kind of, I wouldn't say in an anti-Disney phase, but I just wasn't that interested in watching their stuff. Like, I didn't see Hercules for a long time. I didn't see Emperor's New Groove uh, for quite a few years after it came out. So there was a lot of Disney movies from that era that I just didn't bother with. I want to say it started around the time Pocahontas came out. Because uh, I thought Pocahontas sucked. I think Pocahontas is one of their worst movies. And... Uh, I, it kind of soured me on watching Disney movies from there. Because they did that one and then... Uh, this one might have come out way after, even, but uh, Brother Bear I thought was pretty crap. But, uh. I'll have to give Lilo and Stitch a watch, because I know a lot of people have talked about how good that is, so. That one I'll have to give a watch. Alright, let me look at what you're all saying. I wouldn't give Lion King a 10 out of 10, I'd give it like a 9.8 or 9.9. .9. I would. I would not give their other anime movies a Disney high score. Uh, Beauty and the Beast animated version, I'd be an 8.8. .8. Live... what? I don't know what you're saying. You're, you kind of jumbled all that together, so... I don't know. You said Live Beauty and the Beast, I don't know. I, I've seen Live Beauty and the Beast, I think it sucked. The only good live-action Disney movies were uh, Cinderella and Jungle Book. Those are the only good ones. All the rest of them are garbage. Um... 
Wreck-It Ralph is pretty great. I, I thought Wreck-It Ralph was okay. I didn't think it was anything special. I didn't get that into it. Um, it's the hardest I've laughed. Was that, it's, uh, it's not a dog. <laughs> I'll have to watch the Lilo and Stitch. I think Aladdin is the best, followed by Tarzan. My favorite is The Lion King, followed by Lilo and Stitch. Oh, nice. Oh, we've got some Lilo and Stitch defenders, so that's cool. Yeah, I'll have to give it a watch. It's a classic fall in love with a man, not a status. Lilo and Stitch is about family. It's very good towards kids. Live action Beauty and the Beast, I gave it 9.7. Latin animated, I give it 8.8. Live action Beauty and the Beast is absolute horse manure. I hate that movie. It's not as bad as The Lion King or Aladdin's live action version, but it's still freaking terrible. It's a terrible movie. It's shite. Emma Watson's a, is an awful bell. Her and her stupid auto tune voice. Yeah, I did not like Beauty and the Beast at all. But it sucked. It's like a 3 out of 10 for me. This is not a good room to be in. That big guy and these little guys and little health. <laughs> I feel it like... No, she wasn't. She's horrible. Oh, gosh, Jalen. Just stop. Her voice is freaking auto-tuned. That is that is a stupid take. <laughs> Jeez. Her voice is terrible. It's nails on a chalkboard. She can't freaking sing. <laughs> I'll tell you another Disney animated movie I never bothered to watch. Uh, I have n I have not watched The Little Mermaid. At least I don't remember ever watching it. Her voice is miles from awesome. It's horrible. If her voice was any good, they would have already tried to capitalize on it with a freaking album or something. Her voice sucks. You like Meet the Robinsons? I didn't watch it. I didn't see Meet the Robinsons. But you know, but yeah, Beauty and the Beast can. Beauty and the Beast can devour a whole bag of phalluses. I've seen both Little Mermaids. I thought both were average. Like, I... Like, I feel like I have memory of the Little Mermaid. But I don't remember it. I don't genuinely remember the movie, so I... I feel like I have to by default tell people I haven't seen it because I don't remember ever sitting down and actually watching the movie. Like, I kind of feel like I know what happens because I'm familiar with the story and everyone's talked about it, but I don't really have any memory of watching The Little Mermaid. So I guess by default I'm just like, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the live action one, but I wasn't, inter I wasn't interested in it, but yeah, not the animated version is like, I don't, I don't recall ever actually sitting down and watching it. I guess I'll have to at some point. Yeah, I guess I thought it. I always looked. When I looked at it, I was like, "Yeah, this looks like a girly movie." So, what could it have for me? <laughs> it just looked like a very girly movie. Which you know, that's fine. It can be a girly movie, but I'm not a gale. So that's the way I looked at it. People are afraid to say that Song of the South is their favorite. <laughs> I I've seen Song of the South. Song of the South's pretty good. I mean, I've only seen it the one time, but I watched it and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. I liked it. Like, oh, but it's set, it's set in the antebellum South. It's like, yeah, so it's good. It's like, so what? It's a good movie. 
I don't care. It's a good movie. Suit signal detected. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. That's uh, this live action from Maleficent being to be some jungle book. I, uh, Maleficent, I didn't watch because I wasn't interested in it. I hate the idea of Maleficent having a backstory and or being sympathetic. I think that's stupid. Um, Beauty and the Beast is crap. Jungle Book's pretty good. I like Jungle Book. But, honestly, I think Cinderella's the best one. I thought they did a good job with Cinderella. And it doesn't hurt that Lily James is really freaking hot. Yes, Frozen is over. Frozen's, Frozen's not even a good movie. I literally, like, I, I debated this guy uh, one time who was saying that Frozen was the modern, the modern day Lion King. And I was like, no, it's... I, I was like, that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> Frozen is a terrible movie. Frozen's a garbage movie. Uh, funny part is I read Andy Serkis on Netflix was more book accurate. I haven't seen the Andy Serkis Jungle Book. I'm gonna watch it. I kind of keep forgetting that it was a thing, because it came out at the same time as one of the other ones. So I kept forgetting that it was even a thing. Let me in! Yeah, I hate the song Let It Go. It's a terrible song. But I hate the movie in general. I think it's a stupid movie. And I was shocked that it was stupid. I, I was really looking forward to watching Frozen. Everyone was talking about, oh, it's so great. But yeah, I watched it... Uh, I remember watching it the first time with uh, my nieces, and um, I was taken aback by how much I didn't like it. And I was, and it was weird. It's the, it's the only movie in my life that I have wanted to rewatch because I was like, did I really just dislike that as much as I think I did? Because I was assuming that I was gonna love it. I was like, yeah, this movie's gonna be great. Like, I thought I thought it was gonna be like Tangled, because I thought Tangled was really good. And so I watched it with my nieces, and... I told my older sister, I was like, can we watch that again? And she's like, wow, you liked it that much? I was like, actually, no. I, I'm surprised how much I didn't like it. And I'm wondering if that'll hold up, if maybe there's just something about this movie I'm missing? But then we rewatched it, and I was like, no, I don't like this movie. And I have watched it again since then, and I, I dislike it more and more every time I watch it. I think it's a terrible movie. I think it's kind of crap. It is the most overrated Disney movie ever made. Like, I don't think the second one's a good movie, but the second one's better than the first one. And it's not even good. And I only saw that because I had the Regal Pass. So I was like, well, let's see Frozen 2. So I sat through both of them. But yeah, didn't care for them. First Frozen, I'd probably give like a 3 out of 10. Second one, maybe give a 4. But generally speaking, I'm... Oh, they watched Frozen like 300 times. Yeah, that might have... Yeah, it probably did wear you thin on it. But... I've watched Frozen three times, and... Yeah, I think it's crap. I don't like the songs. Well, I should take that back. I do like one of the songs. But... Uh... I hate what happens when the but what happens in the movie kind of undermines the song. 
Like, to me, the best song in Frozen is uh, the one that her and that uh, Prince sing together. I think that song's funny and cute. But then he turns out to be the bad guy, and it's like, oh, well, that song's kind of meaningless now. It's like, that song's kind of meaningless now because, you know, he turned out to be the bad guy, so... That sucks. <laughs> I have to try harder. I have to react harder. Okay, I have to be careful. That's the thing. I need to be more careful. That's part of it. Uh, can I get up there? I don't know. I don't think so. Ourselves a glyph. Switch to that. Spit more. Yeah. I love breaking stuff. It's a good gun for those. Let me see what you all were saying. Uh, I love the 80s rock ballad in Frozen 2. I don't remember the rest. I don't remember the 80s rock ballad in Frozen 2. <laughs> the only thing I really remember about Frozen 2 is leaving the theater thinking, well, I didn't hate it as much. That was pretty much it. That was really about it. Well, that and saying, but I'm never gonna watch it again. Because there's really no really... There's no need to. Now, granted, now I have a YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, well... If I could somehow monetize it, that... that it might be worthwhile at some point, but I would need a reason to go back to it. Like Frozen, I could see myself watching again just for the sake of like doing a video on it or something and breaking down why it's so terrible. But am I going to do that anytime soon? No. Might I do a live show on it at some point? Yes. I think that would be a good live show. Talking about how terrible it is. And even getting the other perspective of people who like it. Assuming such evil beings exist. <laughs> Which, I know they do. Yeah, I've only seen each movie once. I can't believe they're working on a third. Oh, I can definitely believe they're working on a third. They made a, a metric tuck fun of money. So of course they're making another one. They are going to milk that franchise till it ain't making squat. I think there are, I, if I'm not mistaken, they're working on two sequels right now. And we're also getting Toy Story 5. Ugh. Toy Story 3 was the perfect way to end that. You never freaking needed a Toy Story 4. And Toy Story 4 sucks. That's okay, Jalen. <laughs> longer on YouTube. Yeah, Moana too. Yeah. Say this with love, buddy. The longer I'm on YouTube, the more I feel like people like you don't grow as big because the whole raw I hate everything grift is what gets subs and views. Well, I'm not a I'm not an I hate everyone person anyway. I'm right now working on videos. I'm right now working on a video of something I love. I'm keenly aware of uh I'm keenly aware of the people who just make rage videos. I think that's kind of cringe. But I think there's value to it also. If you're, I mean, at least I think there's value to making videos about things you don't like. But I would need to be motivated to do it not just for money. It's just I'm saying I wouldn't do it if that didn't exist. But uh, 
No, my next video is going to be something I like. A lot. Because I have more fun talking about stuff I like. I don't mind talking about stuff I dislike, but... It just depends on what's up, you know? What, it's like, alright, what am I motivated to talk about right now? Am I wanting to vent about something bad I watched? Or talk about something good? Like, when I watched Avatar The Last Airbender, the live-action one, I considered doing a video on it. I even thought I would. Then I was like, well, maybe I'll do a live stream about it. And I was like, eh, I don't really feel the need to. But <coughs> granted, I've ended up on a live stream talking about it uh, on Fridays, which uh, we had a week off this past Friday, but we're resuming this Friday. And I am looking forward to it. But it's a crappy show, so I am talking about a bad show, but I mix it up. I don't just talk bad stuff. I talk bad and good. But I'm honest about what I think, too. I'm not just going to call something great because people want to think it's great. I'm not going to lie to people. Like talking Forrest Gump last night. I had a lot of fun doing that, but I know a lot of people were like, oh, it's a 10 out of 10 movie. It's like, I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 movie, so I'm not going to call it a 10 out of 10 movie. If I have to sacrifice integrity to grow, then it's not worth it. I talk about what I want to talk about. <laughs> but I am very much looking forward to putting out a more positive video in the near future. tell you this much, I'm really looking forward to uh, Tuesday, because I get to talk about two movies I really like. So I get to be on my show talking about Mystery Men, which is going to be a lot of fun, So I really like Mystery Men. And then on Jacob's channel, I'm going to be talking Amadeus, a.k.a. the greatest movie ever freaking made. Ooh, what was that? Oh, there's another one. Crap. But yeah, my channel, I'll mix, I, I'm, my goal is to, you know, mix it up a little. Sometimes I'll talk the bad stuff, sometimes the good stuff. And one thing I hope you all never see me do is just jump on the hate train because everybody else dislikes something. The narration in Forrest Gump was inspired by Amadeus, according to Zemeckis. Yeah, I can see that, too. Yeah, the way he uh, chronicles his... Uh, the way he chronicles his life is very similar to how Salieri chronicles what went down between him and Mozart. So, yeah, I can definitely see that. That's that's actually pretty pretty obvious now that you, now that you bring it up. I I'd, I'd never heard him say that, but it's like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> And I like it as a story mechanic. I think it's well done. Heal up. Oof, this is gonna be a hard battle. Let's see. I might need to jet away. Yeah. Let's get out of there. That's a hard fight. <laughs> I'll tell you this much, I'm 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 finding the discourse around the Joker 2 trailer kinda cringe, to be honest. Uh being honest and genuine. Uh oh well thank you, Israel. I appreciate you saying that. Can't buy integrity. <laughs> You might have meant to spell integrity, but integrity is a pretty funny way of putting it, so I'm going to just say that was a good. 
I may send you a forty dollars super chat so you can get on hell I, I mean, if uh, if if you want, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you don't. <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? Shoot, yeah. But the uh, a lot of people. I mean, granted, it's I I, I find it interesting that the Joker two. Uh, the Joker 2 trailer seems to have a mixed reaction going to it, and that part I like. I, I like when I like when discourse has a little bit of yay and nay to it. I think that's interesting. Uh, that much of it I like, but the nay side some of the people on the nay side are annoying me because they're acting like they've already seen the movie and it must be garbage. They're like, oh, this, oh, this trailer, the movie's just gonna be mediocre, and I'm like, you're basing that on a two-minute trailer? Look, I, I'm not a huge musical fan, so I have a lot of reservations about the Joker sequel, but I thought the trailer was actually kind of interesting, personally. Now, if you, if, if it didn't sell you on doing a musical, I get that. I get that the trailer is probably not gonna sell everybody on it. But the idea that based on the trailer, oh, it's going to be a mediocre movie. I'm like, how do you know that? I mean, they gave you two minutes. I've been watching to review Joker. I don't think Joker is a good Joker movie. It's a clone of other movies. He's not a Batman villain. So it's an Elseworlds film. Okay, I agree with you that it's an Elseworlds film. But here's the funny thing. Oh, hang on. Let me see. Uh, let me re let me reread what you said just so I know for sure. All right. Uh, I've been wanting to review Joke. Uh, I don't think Joker is a good Joker movie. It's a clone of other. Movies. Okay, so I actually have been working on a Joker video concept because I kind of disagree with the idea that it's a clone. I think that's been way overblown. This idea that, oh, it's copying, you know, Taxi Driver and uh, Falling Down and uh, King of Comedy. It's like, yes, there are some scenes where you can see the inspiration, but I don't agree with the notion that it's a clone. So... I actually am wanting to work on a video where I dispel that notion. Now, as for the Elseworlds notion, I agree with you. It's not its not a joke. Like, I mean, I'm not going to not say it's a Joker movie. It is a Joker movie because it's Joker. But it's not... A, I would more just say it's not a comic book movie. I don't see it as a comic book movie, really. In the pure sense of the world. Like, it's not, it's not like a Batman movie thing. At least they haven't made it that yet. But uh, I think Joker's a pretty dang good movie. And it, it's a movie that I appreciate the more I watch it, to be honest. I have no interest in musical Joker. I mean, on its face, I was... Well, hang on, let me, let me address what Bucolor said first, because I'm going to have to explain a little bit about what I'm feeling about the musical Joker. Joker, as we know him, isn't a tragic character. He's a maniac. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's why we love him. The movie makes him out to be a victim. Mind you, it's great as a film. Uh, yeah, and I, I get that perspective. And I don't even fully disagree with that. But, uh... Hang on. I'm getting a little message here that I have to answer. <laughs> Uh, okay, hang on. So I basically ended up getting... I got a little bit of good and bad news from... Okay, so... We'll worry about that in a sec. But anywho. So... Yeah, I, di I do agree that Joker is not a Joker movie in the tradition... It's definitely not in the traditional sense of Joker movie. I agree with that. Um... Also called a Joker movie because yes, it's it's the character's freaking name Joker and it is taking place in the world of Gotham and all that stuff. It's just it's its own take on it. 
it's kind of just simply its own thing. Uh, I don't mind it breaking convention so long as it does it well, and in the case of Joker, I think it does it pretty dang well. I think it's pretty cool how they did it. As for the musical, I'm not a big musical fan. And when I heard the announcement that Joker 2 was going to be a musical, I found that incredibly jarring and off-putting. But that said, what interests me about it is I'm like, okay, it's such a... It feels so disconnected from the previous movie just as a concept that it makes me think that this is something that Todd Phillips directly has a vision for, that he has a very specific vision for what it's supposed to be, which intrigues me. It's like the fact that he's jumped from a serious drama to the sequel's a musical, I'm like, wow, that's, that's quite a leap. I'm like, well, why is it... Why are you going... Why are you making that kind of a leap? And I tend to think it's because he has a very specific idea for what the sequel is going to be, and that interests me. And gives me a bit of hope because he did such a good job with the first movie. So, I am very willing to give it a chance. Because he did a great job with part one. So, hey, let's see what he does with part two. Now... If it turns out that the musical thing was a, a studio decision, well, it's a weird one, but uh, then it'll probably be car. It'll probably be garbage. But I tend to think that that was a that that's we're getting an artistic. We have an artistic vision in place, and I'm willing to give that a chance for a guy who did a great part one. So we'll see. And I would think after creating the first ever billion dollar R-rated movie that Todd Phillips probably doesn't have to answer too much to a studio for what he wants to do with it. Now that can be good or bad. Not having the reins on you. Because this could turn out to be a self-indulgent, you know, cringe fest for all we know. But, uh, I'm willing to give it a chance. And, like I said, I thought the trailer was kind of intriguing. I was interested in it. Carlin calling him Arthur Fleck, him having a mom, Bruce being 12, Thomas almost being his dad. More of a what-if film. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. It's kind of a what-if film. And a really good one. <laughs> a really freaking good one. I like it. Okay, where is... there's another... Oh, okay. I can't believe the Batman 2 is delayed a year. I can't. Everything gets delayed anymore. I'm, I'm not surprised by delays, period, anymore. They're, they're constant. And this might be a hot take. I'm more interested in the Joker 2 than I am Batman 2. But then again, I didn't like the Batman all that much. I thought the Batman was like a 5 out of 10. That was kind of mediocre. I don't think it's a great movie. I don't think it's a good movie, really. I think it's very mediocre. There's some things about it I think are really, really cool. And there's some things about it I think are pretty bad. So, it is kind of an ultimate mixed bag. And I wanted to love it because that... That initial trailer is one of the coolest trailers I've ever seen. But the movie didn't live up to it. I was very disappointed. I love my first viewing of that film. The more I've watched it, uh, I didn't like it. He never defeats Riddler. Riddler gives himself up. He literally accomplished nothing. I haven't seen the Joker or the Batman. 
Uh, the first viewing I had of Batman, I would say I liked it, but I was kind of in that kind of state where I was like, I'm not sure how much I like this movie. Like, I was iffy on it, and then when I rewatched it at home, I was like, wow, this one dropped off a lot on repeat viewing. And I've watched it two times since then, and I'm, I'm kind of settled on this, on it being like a 5 out of 10. I'm pretty settled on that. But yeah, I... I was very disappointed by the Batman. I was... The trailer made me think I was getting a great movie. I thought it was going to be like... I thought we were looking at a potential masterpiece. And, those, and the initial reviews that, and chatter around the movie suggested just that. They were like, oh, dude, the Batman, it's so good. It's, it's, it's better than The Dark Knight, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, okay, wow, let's, oh, I can't wait to find out for myself. And then I watch it, and I was like, okay, it's not better than The Dark Knight. Definitely. Definitely not that good, but... But yeah, every time I've rewatched it, it's gotten worse. And uh, yeah, I think it's... I think it's a highly overrated film. And the fun, But the funny thing is that... When it came out... It had a ton of votes on IMDb right out of the gate, and it, like they had that movie like in the top ten all time. That movie's overall score has just steadily fallen over the course of the last year or two, because it went from being uh, in the top 250 to being out completely, or like being in like the top ten to being out of the top 250 completely. I still think the best Batman movie is Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, you're not alone in that. I know a lot of people who agree with you on that. You're not alone on that one. That's not a hot take. I cringed at the scene when Riddler lost it in prison. I did too. Like, Paul Dano is really good until he takes the mask off. At which point, pretty cringe. Which sucks, because I generally like him. Uh... No, I'm not going to damage myself. I, I'm going to need the health. We going to stay healthy. We going to stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Paul Dano I ultimately found pretty disappointing. Which really sucks. Pattinson I liked. Uh, I liked him as Batman. Uh, he t didn't really get to see much Bruce Wayne. Which, that sucked. But, um, yeah, I think the Batman's mediocre. Long story short, we had a stream on Cannoli's channel where he talked to that movie. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, the joke. Oh, yeah, the stuff. Like the the after credit or like the, the near after credit scene they had for where they revealed the Joker. I was like, oof, that's that doesn't look very good. And I like Barry Coogan as uh, Coogan's an actor a lot. I think he's a dang good actor. But uh, that look they have for him and the Joker, I'm like, eh, I'm not so sure about that. That looks. Like, I kind of feel like I get the look they're going for. They're going for the Scott Snyder uh, comic version of Joker. But, uh, I don't know about that. Don't know about that one. <laughs> uh, the score for the film was very misused in the way they... Uh, and they kept having to emphasize that it was annoying. My issue, issue was the score in the first 15 minutes was good. The tone was where he slowly walked out and everyone was scared of him. But boy, that dies out quick, <laughs> yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of plot convenience to that film. Like a ton. A lot of it. And there's a bit of plot armor there, too. 
That's very inconsistent. Because jo Joker is a significantly better movie than the Batman. I don't even think that's... I don't even think they're close. It's not over there. Let's find what opened up. Ah, that's what opened. What we got? Level 8 Spitball. That seems powerful. Uh oh. What's this? Uh, I'll take that. Much more better. Nice, get some ether. And going up. Uh. Ooh, a challenge room. That could be really smart or dumb to go into. Uh, I'm going to skip it for now. But there is those. And there's those. Neat. That's 300. Increase weapon damage by 10%. Or oh, uh, repair efficiency. That's damage. Let's gear with damage. Yeah. The one thing I will say for the Batman movie is if the sequel... The sequel potentially could uplift it a bit. But, uh... So that's my hope, is that the Batman sequel will be really good and make the first one better by association, pretty much. But, we'll see. And I'm hoping Catwoman's not in it at all. Because there was way too much Catwoman in the first one. Which wouldn't be bad if it was a great version of Catwoman, but I'm not a big fan of Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman. They keep talking Mr. Freeze. Issue is they don't know how to do him right. He, yeah, because... <coughs> Lord forbid they look to video games to adapt Mr. Freeze right, because the video games are the one medium where they actually kind of got him right. Mr. Freeze is actually pretty cool in the Arkham games. Especially Arkham City. Confirms authorship of the Xenoglyphs. I've heard, but I'll be honest, I'm not positive that the rumors about Mr. Freeze are... I mean, Grant, I, maybe you've heard something that confirms that they're going to be... They're going to be using him, but... Uh, I... I'm, like, I'm inclined to think that the Frozen motif... <laughs> is more about Penguin than it is Mr. Freeze. Symbolic communication. But I could be wrong, so we'll see. We know it's it's either hinting at something to do with one or the other, we know that much, but I kind of think that they're leaning towards Penguin being the main villain. Because, you know, they're doing the show with him and stuff. I, I think they're building towards Penguin, personally, but we'll see. The best one was TAS Heart of Darkness. Cool. I haven't seen that. Oh, oh. Oh, gotta go over there. Let's head over here. Plus, there's a weapon. What if Freeze and Penguin are a team? I mean, yeah, they. I, I guess they could do that, but they haven't introduced him yet. They haven't introduced Freeze yet, so who knows? I knew. I mean, no, I know you're referring to the animated series. I just, uh, I haven't watched the entire animated series. No, I haven't watched the whole thing. I've watched like bits and bobs of it, 
I have it though. I bought it fairly recently because I was like, okay, I need to watch the whole thing because of how revered it is and whatnot. And you know, for what I watched of it, I liked it. But when it was out, I only just kind of watched it because I wasn't a big comic book fan, so Batman didn't mean to me then even what he means to me now, which I'm a fan of Batman, but I'm not a big comic reader. So the animated series, the appeal of it was somewhat lost on me when I was a kid, but not entirely. I watched it. I watched it enough to know that I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, I do need to watch the the Who thing. You should get the Young Justice animated series and watch it. I will keep that in mind. And yes, Israel, Under the Red Hood is awesome. I have seen Under the Red Hood. Under the Red Hood's fantastic. It's one of the best animated Batman stories, period. It's phenomenal. Dark Knight Returns is great. Loved that. Uh, nope, can't buy that. Yeah, the Batman animated stuff is pretty cool. I like it. Great job on Jensen voicing Jason Todd. Yeah, Jason Todd. Chasing Todd. Durr. Uh, okay, I need to go to the right. To the right. Let's see if there's anything worth picking up around here. Uh, nope. We got a better weapon. A better weapon at a higher level. Why change? Oh my goodness. What'll I ever do? Wait a- oh. It turns- it turned that- uh, my boost power off. I didn't see that. Well, crap. My dash. I still thought I had dash enabled. Alan Richton uh, recently expressed his desire to portray Batman. I th yeah, I've seen that. Well, it, it actually wasn't that recently. He, he recently reiterated it. But uh, he's actually talked about that for a couple of months now. But I wouldn't be against it, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, Pattinson's doing Batman, so... What, are they going to start another one? <laughs> I don't dislike the idea, though. I mean, he's... I mean, he basically could kind of fill the role of the big buff Batman that they were trying to have Ben Affleck do. Which I think was a good idea. Affleck's problem, obviously, a lot of it was just that he never got to do a great movie. Or even a good one. Which I never thought I'd feel sorry for him over, but truth be told, he was one of the few semi-bright spots of, you know, their casting choices. I think he had the potential to be a good Batman, but... That's pretty much done at this point, so yeah, if Alan Richardson gets a... Uh... Not Alan Rickman. And Alan Rickman's not too old. He's dead. <laughs> Alan Rickman died. He's talk they're ta we're talking about the huge buff guy on the show Reacher. And uh, Alan Richard Mitchin is about to be in that uh, Henry Cavill movie, isn't he? Is he pushing 43? Oh, he should drop about 45 pounds. People tend to forget Bruce is a ninja. He weighs at best 200, not 275. Yeah, he'd be a huge Batman. Yeah, I almost feel like he'd be better as, like, Bane. Because <laughs> he's freaking enormous. But, uh... Let's see, yeah, uh, it comes out next week. Yeah. Yeah, I knew the movie came out next week, and I'm, I'm actually pretty stoked for that movie. I think it looks kind of cool. Plus, I like Guy Ritchie. I quite like Guy Ritchie films. Alright, we have made some progress. Just need to open up the portal here. I think there's a nearby portal. Ooh. 
bloody shooting gallery. Oh, so we're coming up on a portal. But yeah, League of, uh, what is it, the League of Ungentlemanly Warfare, something like that. I think it looks like a lot of fun. I am looking forward to it. Got a dang good cast. Man from Uncle is pretty cool, really. Yeah, I liked Man from Uncle. I thought I think Man from Uncle is pretty underrated, to be honest. I enjoyed it. Like I had heard going in that it was underrated, but I thought it was even. I thought it was better even than I expected it to be on that presumption. Okay, let's see. Let's blow that away. Oh crap! Didn't see the bullet coming. Dang it! Need some health. Got some health. Nighty night. But I really like the cast they've got for that movie. They got those two. They got uh, Elsa Gonzalez, who is hot. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna be a good bit of fun. I am. I'm actually pretty stoked for that film. I hope it rocks. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's one thing with Snyder I disagree with. He wanted uh, Affleck to be Superman. E Superman's equal physically. He actually is bigger than Cavill. Bruce isn't that big. Yeah, I, well, pff, let's be honest. Snyder got just about everything wrong. Batman weight factors in that bench a thousand pounds. He is drawn bigger sometimes. No man weighing 200 pounds can physically bench a thousand. John Cena barely pushes 500 and he's like 270. Yeah, that yeah. Well, 200 pound guy benching a thousand pounds is kind of retarded. If you can bench a thousand pounds, you don't weigh 200. You might not even be human. That actually raises a question that I'm interested in now. Yeah, the bench press record is 722 pounds. That's the record. And I get Batman's a superhero, but he's not, he doesn't have superpowers, and, and like, Blue Collar said, he's kind of, he's a ninja and he weighs like 200 pounds. He'd have to be kind of ginormous if he wanted to lift anything close to that. Bench pressing is not a martial art. Is there any more health around? I really need some health. <laughs> Although, granted, I'm pretty close to opening up a portal, which hopefully there is one soon. Because it basically operates as a shortcut to the boss fight, which I will need. Uh... He doesn't exclusively know how to ninja, Jalen, but the point is, is that by, by knowing how to ninja, by being a ninja, you kind of need to be sort of part of a certain weight class. Pattinson actually has probably the most uh, ideal, realistic type of Batman physique. Well, I mean, him or him or Bale. I think Bale's physique matches Batman pretty dang well. Physic, like, just from a physical standpoint, Bale is the best Batman. I, he looks 
To me, Bale looks the part better than anyone ever has. My only issue with Pattinson isn't necessarily his physique, it's just that, uh... And granted, he is playing a young version of Batman, but he's kind of got one of those faces that you get the sense is going to be a perpetual baby face. So, like, I don't know if he's ever going to look old enough, but we'll see. Uh, I'm just, I'm looking up the mountain from Game of Thrones, Eddie Hall. These guys struggle with five to six hundred. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, the bench pressing record is not even a thousand. It's like you're talking about Batman not just owning the bench press record, but by a couple of hundred pounds. That's a bit ridiculous. It's a bit ridiculous. We're it's like we're going to we're moving into OP territory, okay? <laughs> Yes, Batman does have rules that apply. I don't buy that. I think you're coping. I think it's a bit of copium. My my, I I, I like Pattinson. I like I'm not against. I'm not in any way against him. I I don't think that even the issues with the Batman movie are on him. I think it wasn't written well for his talents. So, yeah, I, I I think he'll be a good Batman. We're just, but in terms of the idealistic Batman. But yeah, every character has rules they have to operate within. If you don't give characters rules, then there's no stakes. You can basically just deus ex machina yourself out of anything if you don't apply certain rules, and Batman has certain rules. No. I don't agree to your terms. <laughs> I don't... It, uh, the idea that Batman can bench a thousand pounds is retarded. I'm also looking up, has it ever been established how much he can bench? Okay, yeah, so they did, they did, they did that in Batman. Okay, so it's a modern, it's one of those, it's like Batman 655. So yeah, this would have been a modern, uh, that was a modern Batman comic. So in other words, it was a retarded Batman comic that gave him the thousand pound bench press. Well, that comic can go screw itself because that's stupid. That's really stupid. That would be one of those things that if they ever tried to apply it to the movie, I'd be like, yeah, your movie's now going to suck. Or at least that aspect of it's going to suck, because that's stupid. I don't particularly like that power, so I'm not going to use that one. But yeah, this is just one of those things where a comic book can suck, too. Get a thing here. What we got? Yeah, I'm, well, and, and you're going beyond peak human. Like, the funny thing is, the comic tries to describe it all. Oh, it's near superhuman. I'm like, no, actually, a man being able to bench a thousand pounds, you have crossed over into superhuman. Because literally, no human can do that. There is not a human being capable of doing that. We literally are keeping a record of this stuff. I'm just saying. It's like, if you want to contend, this, it's like, don't contend he's near Superman. If you want Batman to bench a thousand pounds, well, you need to stop calling him a normal guy. He's, he's no longer a regular man. He's superhuman. He is superhuman if he can do a thousand pounds. It's that simple. 
Run! Yep, we are fleeing out of that place. Uh, hopefully we can survive here. I missed. Alright. Uh, oh, shoot. We got that guy. Dang it. I don't think I'm gonna live. <laughs> Yeah, like, if you want to say Batman can lift a thousand pounds because he's wearing some kind of special, you know, strength-enhancing stuff. Like, if it's not inherent to his ability, it's like it's something that he has to augment in some way. That's one thing. That's one thing. But the idea that he can do it purely on his own as just a normal guy, it's preposterous. It's like you're straining in my ability to suspend disbelief. Gosh, that was a freaking nothing bit of health. Oh my goodness. Throw me a freaking bone here, game. <laughs> yes. I think this is the portal. Yeah, I think that's retarded, Jalen. Oh, he can't because he's Batman. That's retarded. Because you've moved beyond... Because it's like, okay, well, he's Batman. Well, Batman's never been a superhero in the sense that he's a superhuman. He's a superhero, but like the low-power one. That's kind of what makes him great, is he's a normal, he's a normal guy who did, you know, who made himself better. Being able to bench a thousand pounds, that doesn't get explained away just because, oh, well, he's Batman. Because now you're superhuman. We've moved beyond... We've moved beyond uh, that which a human is capable of. It's like, okay, well, now he's basically a mutant. Okay, so unless there's some health nearby, I am definitely not going to win this boss fight. <laughs> Almost certainly not. But yeah, I will never adopt that attitude of, well, he's Batman, so it's fine. It's like, no. That's, that's the kind of crap that people get away with that are bad writers. Yes, he's literally, exactly. He's labored as a superhero with no powers. That's why we like him. There's an element of really like him learning all the martial arts. I don't mind that because you can learn that. Uh, we're not in a place where we've learned to be able to lift a thousand pounds on a bench. We're just not there. Mm, big spooky man. This is a cool boss fight, but I'm obviously not going to win it. Not with this level of health. one health bar. Now the fight gets harder. Ow. And there we go. Not a bad boss fight if you got more, if you got more health, but kind of impossible when you can only take two hits. <laughs> 
Unless you're just uh, an absolute Chad. I already saw that chat, Jalen. It's still you're still wrong. <laughs> Alright, so am I I've just got the one I've got the one either. I will deposit it though. It's like I'm paying off a pre-order. Exactly, Bruce like Batman being grounded is part of what makes him good. It makes him neat. I don't even necessarily mind the notion that he can that he's stronger than anybody else of his size. That's fine. But he's a 200 pound man. You're making him not only stronger than all the other 200 pound men, you're making him stronger than any man who's ever existed. And beyond human strength capability. It's like, okay, well now he's a superhero that's got superpowers. Not a superhero who's an everyman in a lot of other ways. When he fought Mr. Freeze, he had a cold. Yeah. Gosh, there's more of them. Yeah, you're not making Batman uh, stronger than any human in comics or stronger than real life humans. Yes, you are. I'm sorry, any comic that tries to portray humans of any kind, like normal humans... Oh... Actually, if I'm not mistaken, when I looked up that little bit of lore, they are saying that he's the strongest human in existence. Because basically no human, even in the comics, has done that as far as I've seen. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, person. Whoever you are. <laughs> Sorry, somebody commented on my Forrest Gump stream and then subscribed to me. Isn't that delightful? I'm not counting metahumans, because because Batman's not a metahuman. That's part of the issue. He's not even a metahuman. He's a human. He wasn't given any superpowers or anything like that. Earn salvage from the next three kills, detaches afterwards, triggers a critical malfunction, I detach. Nope! Not that. Uh... But yeah, part of what also makes Batman interesting is the fact that he would be at a disadvantage against all the metahumans in terms of physicality. But even that... I mean, granted, he's always going to be at an advantage against normal humans because he knows all the martial arts. He doesn't need to be able to lift a thousand pounds. And again, logically, he shouldn't. It's silly. It's a silly, silly thing. Alright, it's boosting the health. <laughs> yeah. DC's got a ton of problems anymore anyway. They're, I mean, the comics are being written by people who don't know how to write anymore. I'm sure in the comics they have made Bane stronger than him. They've broke, they've, they've disregarded any sense of, you know, grounding this to any sort of any sort of reality, which makes it very difficult to relate to on any level. 
And you have to keep something in mind, Jalen. We're also, like, this is part of the reason why it's like that we got into this conversation to begin with is because we were talking about movies. And what you're talking about in movies is like, yeah, you can draw a character and just say, well, I'm setting new limits on what humans can do. And you can get away with it because they're cartoon characters. Not really going to be able to pull that off in a movie. You're not going to find an actor who can train himself up to weigh 200 pounds and lift 1,000. The latter you won't be able to achieve at all. <laughs> Dang it. There we go. There we go. I'm getting the nice little money money here for these. more health. I'm gonna try to take one more crack at the boss before I call the stream, because, yeah, it's closing in on three hours. So we'll have to wrap up fairly soon, but I'm hoping to get one more crack in at the boss, because I've opened up the shortcut. A little bit of work to be done on the f to get there, but that's fine. Let's see. Uh, yeah, alright, so there's something to the right. Let me see what's in the blue room real quick. Uh, it's not quite the same thing, though, Jalen, is it? You can portray somebody having done all that stuff. You can't... It's You're not going to find somebody who can actually... Who can do a portrayal of somebody lifting a thousand pounds and make it realistic. You're not going to be able to pull that off. You can portray somebody being that kind of ridiculously smart. That you can pull off. Because the thing about movies is that movies, when you have a live action movie, you're kind of inherently grounding it to a type of reality. Now you can heighten that sense of reality to an extent, but you can't forego it entirely. There are certain rules you obviously can forego entirely, but not every one of them. If you want to show a human being lifting a thousand pounds, then... and make it look in any way realistic, that's kind of next to near impossible, because it isn't realistic. I don't think you quite get what I'm saying, Jalen. I know you can CGI, but I'm, what I'm saying is it won't be realistic in any way, shape, or form if you show some. Yeah, you can you can take two weights and make them look really, really. You, you can take two gigantic round balls and make them completely hollow and just write one thousand, like five hundred on both ends, and like see, it's a thousand pounds and look, he's lifting it. Of course, you can portray that, but how will that look? Well, it'll look ridiculous. It'll look silly. And people will take it as silly. They'll be like, oh, well, that's silly. That doesn't make any sense. Now, if you're if you're telling people, oh, it's not supposed to make sense. It's meant to be comedic. Okay, that's fine. But Batman's not a comedy. The DC comics in particular are trying to ground themselves in something of a realistic setting. That's why we see all of the DC movies kind of try to be gritty and grounded and whatnot. They've always tried to be that. Once you have a regular guy without superpowers lifting a thousand pounds, you've pretty much given that up. That's a superpower. You've pretty much given him a superpower at that point. And that's, that's my point, is it's not merely a guy lifting a thousand pounds. You can portray that. But if you're going to tell me this man can lift a thousand pounds, I'm going to tell you, oh, you're saying he's got superpowers. He has super strength. Now, if you tell me, yes, that's true, he has super strength, I'm like, okay, fine, no problem. But if you start telling me, no, no, he doesn't have super strength. He can just lift a thousand pounds, I'm like, I don't believe you.
you've stretched my ability to suspend my disbelief. If you're telling me a normal guy can do that. He's either normal or he's not normal. Part of Batman's appeal is that he is otherwise a normal guy who has simply taken his money and his God-given gifts and he has taken them to the nth degree. But he is still otherwise a guy. He's a human being. Lifting a thousand pounds goes beyond that. He's now got a superpower. Oh, I got hit. Dang it. <laughs> Kill. Dang it. All right. Got him. Got him. I think David Goggins stories who's David Goggins I know the name I just can't remember who he is uh, he's a retired American US Navy SEAL Well, if he really did those things, then I don't believe you, Jalen. <laughs> they may seem unbelievable that somebody could do what he did, whatever it is that he's saying he did. But if he actually did them, then a human's capable of doing them. That's just... That's, that's not an ability to suspend disbelief. That's an inability to just believe reality if he can do those things. He's been on Joe Rogan a bunch. Okay. I, I don't watch Joe Rogan a ton. And it's not, I mean, I watch Joe Rogan when I can and when he's got a guest on that I know something about and I'm interested in, but I don't watch him all the time. <laughs> I usually just pick up snippets of Joe Rogan interviews. Exactly. If he did those things, then humans are capable of him doing it. That's a terrible argument. That's a really terrible argument. That's like saying, I don't believe a woman can dunk, and then you see it, and it's like, well, guess what? They can. They're not all of them, but there's a few who can. It really doesn't matter if you can believe it. The evidence proves that they can do it. As of right now, there is absolutely no evidence that a human being is capable of benching a thousand pounds. No human has done it. As far as we know, it's never even been close to have been done. The record is literally over 250 pounds short. Not a small margin. Now, could humans eventually get there with medicine advancements and training advancements? I suppose. Potentially. Records are, you know, all, you know, records are made to be broken and, you know, you kind of follow that train of logic along one person will break the current one one then will break another one and you know if you broke it by a few pounds each time I guess eventually you would get to a thousand but the fact of the matter is nobody's even gotten close to it it's kind of the problem it's not just that nobody's done it nobody's close to doing it so again if you're telling me you've got a human who's done it in a comic book I'm gonna tell you well then he's got superpowers he's superhuman He's not a normal man. Because here's and here's the thing about the guy you're talking about. Whatever his stories are, either he's telling the truth or he's a liar. It's kind of one or the other. So what he's saying is true or not. You know, there's an objective reality to that. 
it has nothing to do with the ability to... I mean, you can... If you find what he says to be unbelievable, you actually could be right that it's not true. Or he could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know who the guy is very well, and I don't know if the stories check out. But, it, I mean, because either way, I mean, I guess the fact, what I'm saying is, that's, this example you're giving doesn't really help your case. <laughs> What would help your case is if you found somebody who actually benched a thousand pounds. Or even remotely close to it. That would help. A story that has an objective reality attached to it is not going to help you. Unless it's somebody lifting a thousand pounds or close. Like, say you were to say, I guess what, I found somebody who's, lift, who's benched 950 pounds. I would be like, Okay, I could buy a Batman could go 50 pounds over the norm. I, I would accept that. I would be willing to accept that. But we're 260 some odd pounds short, if I'm not mistaken. It's a bit much. A bit much. Uh, it's a lot much. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, all fire Kuba, neat. Well, that's that much is obvious, Jalen. We already know that by the fact that you're okay with it. So that's not really saying much. We already knew that. The point that's like the point of having this kind of a discussion isn't to try to it's to it's to explain your point of view I don't think you've done that effectively other than just to say he's Batman and I can accept it I'm like okay well then that's kind of, if that's all there is to it then that's kind of the end of the discussion I guess but I think we've we've explained our position a little bit more thoroughly yeah you're allowed to no, it's like, you're obviously allowed to accept it for what it is. If you enjoy that, that's fine. Enjoy away. No one's telling you you can't enjoy that. That's, that's fine. But if we're going to have that kind of a talk, then it's like, okay, bring a little more to the table than just, well, he's Batman and I'm fine with it. Because then, if that's all there is to it, then, okay, well, then there's no point to have a long-standing discussion over it. <laughs> There's just no point. I'm actually on Marvel's website. Captain America has the super soldier formula. Uh, Batman with no powers and formula literally lifts more than Cap, who is technically su Yeah. <laughs> Even Marvel didn't stretch it that much, and he's an actual superhuman. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, granted, they're different universes, but still. Like, if you had told me Captain America could lift a thousand pounds, I'd be like, well, he is injected with super serum, so I guess it's okay. But yeah, it looks like they have a little bit more... They're a little more in touch with reality. And again, this is this thing with Batman is a very new development. That's that Batman has not always been able to do what the comics are saying he's doing now. This is new, new Batman doing this benching thousand pounds. Okay, but Jalen, if you're saying he's better than Captain America, then you're telling me he's a superhuman. Because Cap is Cap's basically got turned into a superhuman. He is a literal super soldier. So Batman is no longer the normal guy. Which compromises a big part of his character.
it would if they existed in the same universe and I were Captain America, I'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Your formula can't even make me as strong as Batman? That's kind of lame. <laughs> well, I died. But anywho, that is going to have to wrap... Do I prefer DC or Marvel? Well, I'm not a comic reader, but... The, the comics I have read are DC, so... Uh, well, he's obviously a more interesting character. I agree with you, Batman's a more interesting character than Cap, but that doesn't really have anything to do with the discussion. <laughs> it's not relevant to it. Uh, as far as movies, mm, I mean, my favorite superhero movies tend to lean on the DC side also, although Marvel probably has a higher quantity of good superhero movies, so, yeah. Alright, sounds good, Blue Collar. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I appreciate everybody hanging out and chatting with me. This was fun. I like these chats even when there's a disagreement. It's entertaining. But, uh, anywho, uh, not going to be streaming tomorrow. Uh, going to be kind of busy tomorrow. But, uh, I will be back with Mole streaming next week as well as the live show Tuesday. So, I will see you all then. Uh, if you haven't smashed the like button, please do so. And if you're, if you catch this stream after the fact, please consider subscribing. See y'all next week. Good night. God bless. And Gord Speed.